Welcome to Living Hope Podcasts. In today's program, Dr. Peter McLuhan shares an encouraging message on the 77th anniversary of Ingleside Church. Join us in our worship center to hear, Stir Up Your Gift. How could Miss Fletcher have ever imagined that the home group she started all those years ago would bear so much fruit for the kingdom of God? She set in motion a movement that has sent members from this church to over a hundred nations. She laid the foundation for a Christian school that has served over 7,000 students. She launched a media ministry she didn't know would exist to broadcast the gospel to 185 nations. She opened the door for more than 11 million people to hear the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. Miss Louise is a modern-day Lois, the mother of Eunice, and the grandmother of Timothy, who became the Apostle Paul's son in the ministry. We give thanks to God for her. As we celebrate today, it's good to remember the charge that Paul gave to Timothy when he became the pastor of the church in Ephesus. Paul said, I remind you of the sincere faith, a faith that first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. Paul went on to say, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. It's always good to be reminded to stir up the gift of the Holy Spirit that's been placed in us. It's even better to be reminded to live in the power and in the love of the Lord. So we renounce a spirit of fear that always tries to paralyze the next generation from believing that there's diminished hope for our future. So often you hear young people say, you guys have messed up the world, and now we have to inherit the world and live in a diminished world. It's just not true. There is a God who can open doors and overcome all obstacles. I break off any fear you feel about your future or the future of your children I break off any fear you may have about the future life of this church. Aging churches are often paralyzed when sometimes there's a perception of past glory days, especially when people say, I remember when, and the sentence that's about to follow is an indication of past glory. There are certain days that I remember, but I'm looking forward more than ever to all that God has for us to do. I love the imagery that Paul used to encourage Timothy. It's translated in many different ways. Some people say rekindle. Some say kindle afresh. Some say keep using. Some say stir up. Some say keep ablaze. And some say fan into flames. These are very visual things for us to think about today. I remember when we cooked on a a wood stove in Africa. I remember when we heated our home, even here in America, with wood. People who've done that know exactly what Paul meant. A fire can't be left unattended. It will quickly lose its power. It needs to be stoked. It needs to be stirred up to keep hot and ready for use. So God has not called us to coast. God has called us to run our race to the finish line. And I'm so proud of folks in this room who are running with all that they have for our church to become that God wants it to become. It's inappropriate for old members to say it's time for the younger ones to take up the task if they've not taken the time to personally mentor the replacement in ministry. I hope you're mentoring somebody who can take the reins from you and carry the church forward. It's a beautiful thing to see older persons grow deeper spiritually as their physical strength diminishes. Mother used to say to me, I just don't know why I'm here, but Joyce and I were clear that in her 90s, we knew why she was still here. We needed her prayers. We needed her love. You have something to give all the way until your last breath. Today, I stir up all of us, from the youngest to the oldest, to run our race to the best of our ability until Jesus calls us home. One might ask, how do I stir up the gift that is in me? 
And we do it by going back to the basics of reading and meditating on God's word, by praying and doing the things we did when we first trusted Jesus. You remember how you felt. Encourage you to make a fresh start, giving Jesus first place in your life, first place in your priorities. Give him to Jesus today and let him lift you again and put air under your wings to minister in a powerful way. On this anniversary Sunday, I'd like to take a second text of Scripture to comment, and this is taken from the Apostle John's letter that he wrote to the church at Ephesus when he was on the island of Patmos. It's another appropriate warning received from an old man. After commenting on the members of the Ephesian church, thanking them for the many good things that they had accomplished, he gave them this warning. Speaking on behalf of Jesus, he said, I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works that you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place amongst the churches. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. What stern words these are, a rather strong admonition given to what many people believe to be the strongest church in Asia Minor. It's a good warning for us today, the loss of first love, that which turns delight into duty and takes the joy out of ministry. We want to revive that first love today. It's a symptom of losing the wonder of our salvation. It's an indication that our loving relationship with the Lord is growing stagnant and we are simply becoming religious. It's the risk of believing that somehow we have arrived. Oh, that's a dangerous feeling. If any of those statements resonate with you in any kind of way, I call you back to the love that you felt when you first followed Jesus. Pastor Margaret loves to share the story of how after she received Jesus as her Savior, Her girlfriends commented on the glow on her face. They wanted to know, what's gotten into you? She was manifesting first love for Jesus. And Jesus wants us to live in such a way that people want to know what's different about you. It's the presence of Holy Spirit bringing fresh vitality to our lives and to all that we do. Here are some signs that first love is returning to our congregation I'm excited to share these things with you. Young people have been praying three nights a week for our church in this building, for our city, for the nation, for the world, for the countries they came from. And it's exciting every now and then to stop in and listen to the fervency of the prayer that's being offered in this room. And this room is being stewarded by those who come and pray that the presence of God would be felt. It's so often when I bring visitors into this room, they say, I feel a presence here. It's being stewarded by the vitality that we carry when we come into this room. Some of our young people are going out on the streets and sharing their faith with others. We've been listening to testimonies from time to time. Yesterday, young people fed homeless people a meal in downtown Norfolk. They expected 60 to come or prepared for 60, 70 showed. They ran out of food, and what a blessing that is. Singing on the streets and lifting up the name of the Lord. Isn't that great? That's a sign of first love. Last weekend, two young people were baptized up at Ocean View. I just love doing open-air baptisms. People inevitably will come by and say, are you doing a baptism? I remember when I used to go to church. In fact, someone talked with Pastor Margaret about that. It just stirs people up. And those of us who, who watched had joy. Fifteen of us, I think, were there for this happy occasion On Friday night, five of our members took food and seven gift baskets donated by our Benevolence Fund to welcome new students arriving at Old Dominion University. What a joy it was to meet with some people. I sat next to a young man from Nepal. He was so surprised that I had visited his country. Others from India and talked about, well, where did you go? And I mentioned the places I've been. He said, well, you've been all over India. (laughs) And indeed, I have. Pastor Margaret, in this very room, is teaching an Alpha course at Homeschool Plus to some of the students that have questions about their faith. 
young people are in a free environment to ask any question they want to ask. This Alpha course has a way of providing answers in a non-threatening kind of way, in an open environment. One of the students this week for the first time actually participated, and she just felt the Spirit of God moving in these students' lives. We think there's more coming with Alpha. If you'd like to have a home group, Alpha would be a good way to invite neighbors and to share the message of Jesus with people who have questions about it all. Regular power surge has been renewed. I think we're coming up on number four this coming uh, Friday, four in a row. We had power surge monthly for a long time, and COVID changed some of that. We're so glad that there's an emphasis upon power, the particular emphasis upon power surges to have extended worship and then to have extended teaching and extended times of prayer and prophecy Our benevolence team has been more active helping people in the last two months. How exciting is that? We've helped people from the Middle East to these international students and then with some local needs as well. Yesterday, Pastor Margaret led a seminar on how to love your children. There was just a hunger in the room for people to hear about that. She left with the feeling in her spirit, I'm going to do this again. Has no idea when or how, but the people who attended will invite her because the word spread about how much they received. This church believed in healing before I ever came, but not many people were healed in their prayers, and there's a reason for that. Many churches pray for healing, especially they pray on Wednesday night for healing for people who are not present. Healing changes when we learn to use the language that Jesus used. Esther, Margaret, and I attended some seminars to sharpen our language when we pray for physical need. We've learned to use the power and authority that Jesus delegated to all of his followers to pray with authority to tell diseases to go. Sometimes you hear in the American church, well, that's for overseas. Listen, overseas, there aren't doctors. What are you talking about? 50 miles to the nearest clinic, 100 miles to the nearest hospital. You have to have faith. It's faith in God or it's faith in the witch doctor. And so we're so glad that healing is available. There's as much unbelief in America as there is in Africa. (laughs) More belief in Africa than there is in America. So we need healing right here. God wants to move through us, and so we're so glad for what is happening. There's nothing like the flow of the Holy Spirit through your hands healing somebody to restore first love. I don't think I've ever prayed for somebody who got healed. I didn't laugh. It's just like overwhelmed. Me? Who? Me? You used me? (laughs) Really, God? (laughs) And the joy that wells up within us, it's the joy of first love. God wants to use you. He wants healing to flow through your hands. All of these things I've shared are signs of re-emerging joy and love in serving the Lord. You're feeling the loss of first love for Jesus or the church. We invite you to take a step this week towards doing the things that you did when you first met Jesus. He is waiting for you to reach out to him and take your next step. There's one more scripture that I would like to share with you today. In preparing for an anniversary Sunday, I like to look at the psalm that matches the anniversary number that we are celebrating. This week, I've been looking at Psalm 77. I found some related verses or things that I feel like relate to us as a church. Consider this cry from Asaph, one of the major contributors to the book of Psalms. Turn with me to Psalm 77, opening cry. I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long I prayed with hands lifted towards heaven, but my soul was not comforted. I wonder if you've ever felt that way. You just can't get through to heaven for one reason or another. That's how Asaph felt. If you've ever felt that way, then you understand the cry of this man's heart. So with all the good news that I have shared with you, you might be wondering, Why is there a need to cry out to the Lord? As your senior pastor, I need to sound an alarm that there's been a shift in giving in the church and the support of our school. We have reached a financial red line. 
We're struggling right now. I want to be clear that the media ministry takes absolutely no resources from the church. All of that is given by outside people who support our funding. It is our own need and our own lack of provision that we are facing right now. Our stewardship team is asking you to join them in crying out to the Lord for his provision for us and for our future. In sharing this news with you, we are asking you to stand with us against the spirit of fear. We are asking you to believe that God has a provision for us. The psalmist goes on to say these words, O oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God mighty like you? You are a God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power amongst the nations. Your strong arm, you redeemed your people. Psalm 77, verse 13 and 15. I'm so glad we serve a great God, a God of wonders who demonstrates awesome power amongst the nations. So last night, Deacon Farabee and I cried out to the Lord for the financial needs of our church and of our school. What a joy to pray together, to pray in the spirit, to pray with faith, to pray with earnesty, to ask God to do something for us. We didn't pray in fear. We declared with the psalmist, by your strong arm, you redeemed your people. We're asking God to redeem us from the need that we have. And we hope this message encourages not only the members of our own congregation, but the members in our partnership. We now have over 12,000 pastors and ministers leading more than 8,000 churches, ministries around the world. Many write to us asking for financial assistance. We always are clear we're not able to do that. Most people in churches overseas think that all American churches are rich. Do you believe that? <laughs> it's amazing how people believe that. But we want you, our partners, to know that like you, we live by faith, looking to the Lord every week to meet our financial needs. We have found him faithful, and that we know that you will find him faithful. There are just some things that money can't buy. Have you figured that out already? Money can't buy peace, can't buy health, can't buy safety from the troubles of this world. There's some things that are free. It's the presence of God in your life. Asaph concluded with the psalm with these encouraging words. Your way was through the sea. Your path was through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. Isn't that interesting? You led your people like a flock. Sometimes God leads us to the waters that are over our head, just like he did in the wilderness. That point is actually the point of our salvation. Sometimes we can't see the footprints of God on the path that he has placed for us to follow, but he is always near. If you're facing an impossible situation, we invite you to turn to Jesus for salvation today. Ask him to save you like he saved the people of old. Jesus came to help us overcome the challenges that we face in life. He came to help us find meaning and purpose. I believe the Lord is drawing to him people who are facing what feels like an impossible situation. I'm sure that's resonating with some in the room. This is impossible. It may be financial, medical crisis. Jesus has a solution for everyone. Ask Jesus to lift the uncertainty of where you will spend eternity from your shoulders. Jesus came to make it possible for us to have a close relationship with God to know that we will go to heaven when we die. Ask him to fill you with the presence of his Holy Spirit. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me on the cross to pay for my sins and inviting me to live in a close relationship with you. If you just prayed with me to accept Jesus as your Savior or were healed while listening to this message, write to me and I will share more information with you about what it means to follow Jesus. If you received Jesus as your Savior or were healed while listening to this message, write to me and we'll send you more information to help you grow as a follower of Jesus. To hear all of this sermon or more uplifting messages, please visit my YouTube channel at Dr. Peter McLuhan. 
Join us next week for another episode of Living Hope Podcasts.